Hey, what's up, my awesome historians? I hope you're having a fantastic weekend, and um, also, I hope you had a great 4th of July. Uh, please be sure to post something on our page that talks about what you did for 4th of July. I think that's really important. It's important because also, it's a time where we look at the past, we look at history to really inform and to sort of build a certain heritage of what it means to be American today. That's a sort of a trend we've used in our world history class, isn't it? To sort of see how history and identity are, are combined together and how later on civilizations and, and different people are able to look back and to use moments of time and events and how people saw themselves. And for us today, how that story of 4th of July um, is really connected to a lot of identity and values used in politics a lot and, and all those things. So it's kind of interesting to see and to think about how that weaves into your own personal story. And maybe think about if a thousand years from now, what would people be looking at American culture and how would they use the 4th of July? Um, to sort of tell that story. It's something to think about. But the main reason I'm giving you this video is because, well, we've had some technical issues here in the last week or so. Um, and sadly, Canvas uh, and at Shasta College and Canvas team was able to reach out to me and say quite a few students uh, have lost access. There was something that you weren't able to log in. That created a big problem with the Friday discussion and a lot of stress with y'all. So I just want to alleviate that by show you um, how we're going to navigate for the next couple weeks, get back on track, and also to have it open enough with the due dates that you can look at your own personal schedule because it's summertime and I know there's a lot of stuff going on and you can make sure to weave in and use the schedule of our class to fit in with your personal busy schedule, okay? I know, so you look at when you're going to the lake, look at barbecues you gotta do and certain things work related or, or whatever and fit that into uh, the flexibility of the next few weeks, okay? So that should work, I hope. So this is the time to take a step back and see how can you navigate up till July 22nd. Now, July 22nd, which is a Monday, that's gonna be the end of week number six. That's when I'm gonna do the next big bout of grading by the 22nd and 23rd. So if you can get all this stuff done and caught up by then, you'll know exactly what you're gonna be and how your grade's gonna look going into the week number seven and our final week of week number eight. Remember, there's no final. So it's all about these discussions, a little bit of the, those quizzes that you can take over and over again just to help you with the material and those short little brainstorming stuff, okay? So if you rock that stuff, you're gonna be in a good position. So it's just a matter of making a schedule that works for you. All right, so real big picture is by the end of week number four, this Friday needs to be completely caught up. Anything you need from week number four beyond and before that needs to be done by this Friday. So that allows you time, and a lot of you are already done with this. This is where you need to caught up or if you haven't had access, get that done by Friday, you'll be in a good spot. Week number five, that's gonna be done by, and it's only one discussion week number five. I cut it down, so sadly, so that it's only one discussion. That's gonna be due July 17th, which is a Wednesday. Then that gives you till the following Monday to work pretty hard, and, and maybe this is where the schedule can work, so maybe you don't have to work on the weekend, but have everything done for week number six done by July 22nd, all right? So 12th, 17th, 22nd, that'll set you up. Now let's see what that looks like. So if you look at the modules, let's go down. Okay, there we go, week number four. Uh, there you go, plans for independence, love to see something. That's a nice little fun thing. Something nice for me to see of who wants to connect with you all. Um, so you looked at hopefully week number four, a lot of you are already getting into this big discussion due Monday, uh, looking at the challenges that this, of how history uses um, the story, the narrative of the Americas and Africas. And oftentimes if there's something to be dropped out, sadly it's these continents that get dropped from the history books. So we're gonna look at how that, what that means, how it shows a different story of civilization how these are important parts of not only to get a real view of the world civilizations, but different views as well. So that's a fun one. Uh, a lot of material I have there, so go through that if you haven't already. Um, but there it is. So you have a, must, a Monday discussion there. But really, this, if you need to, you can have this. Again, this is part of week number four. So you can have that due by that Wednesday, the 12th. Also, um, but more importantly, you want to be able to give yourself time to do the this this halfway discussion. It's almost a midterm, but it's a discussion, it's not a test. 
But it's going to take you some time. It's due Wednesday. What have we learned? And that's looking at the big picture of the last four weeks. So how does the river valleys form? And how do they show complex stories? How do they differ to different valleys? What, how's, what does Paleolithic time look like? Neolithic time? So all the stuff we've looked at are going to come to a head with Wednesday, July 12th discussion. Okay? So finish all that. Anything from up to this point, have it done by July 12th. All right? Now, week number five. It's looking at the clash of the Greeks, and the Persians. I wish I could set a whole class on this. I used to teach a class on this because you get into mythology and get into the story of the Greeks and story of the Persians, our own identity of how we think of Western civilization connected to this clash um, and uh, how we fabricated that over the years, especially in the 1800s with colonialism. There's a lot of stuff we could talk about with this. However, we got to move forward. This is a taster. This is an appetizer of what you could be learning at a deeper level, um, but it's a nice information. So this all is coming together and will be due the 17th. So I have a lecture in there, skim through the readings, and that's all going to guide you really well to the idea of Hellenizistic culture. Hellenization is Greek. Helen is the Greeks. Hellas, Greek. So Hellenization means the process of creating Greek culture. So you're going to look at that in this Wednesday discussion, okay? So again, all that, week number five, well, that could be due by the 17th. Now, what you're also going to see that's going to be open here is then week number six. This is all going to be then uh, coming together. I'm going to change the dates on this, but that's all going to be coming together uh, by the 22nd, okay? So you'll have a discussion there. Um, and then you'll be able to get through that material and uh, there'll be quite a bit to go through, but you don't have to go through the textbook. You could do everything from this, the readings and the lectures that I put inside the canvas, okay? So use the textbook really skimming it, but you'll be able to get through the material really well if you go through everything I've posted on the pages. They're quick readings, they're in there, there's some videos I post. Uh, so be sure to look at all that stuff. Um, and there's some other videos, ancient Roman 20 minutes. That's going to help you. Uh, so looking at both Rome and China, that's going to get you through the discussion. Hopefully if you get it done by Friday and then following Monday, but whatever you need there, uh, be able to get that all done. And so then you're caught up with week number six. Then from there, we're going to get into week number seven and eight. And that's quite a lot of material there. This is an eight week class, so it's very uh, accelerated, but it gives you a chance to look at your schedule to finish week number six by the 27th, week number five by the 17th, and everything up to week number four by this Friday, which is Friday the 12th, okay? So look at your own personal schedule, see what you need to make that happen, and that's gonna set you up for what you need to get through the material. Um, remember what I recommend doing now, here's the last point. What I really think is useful. If you go discussion first, and if you copy the questions into a word document, even if you have to write it down, but then when you go through the readings, go through my lectures, go through everything, you could write some quick notes. If you skim through the reading, find information in the textbook to get some quick notes, bullet points of to answer those questions and give some examples. Then when you write it out, you can just write out what your views are, what you think, and support that with those quick notes that you have right there. Boom, that's going to save you so much time on discussions. You'll be so surprised. And it's a great skill for when you transfer to university. This is how you need to handle university classes in the future, okay? So try that first. Maybe the first thing is going to discussions and checking out those questions, using those questions as your base of what you need to get through, what kind of stuff. Everything else you can feed out pretty much and uh, focus on that stuff, okay? So that'll help you for the next few weeks and also finish all the class. Right on. So again, just to reiterate, end of this week, everything up to week number four. That's going to be by this Friday. Then the following week, by Wednesday, just one discussion, but that's going to be due Wednesday the 17th. But that gives you time to get through all the reading, the lectures, the stuff for the Friday discussion and the following Monday. But you could turn all that in. If you miss, if you'd want to turn the Friday discussion in on Monday, that's fine too. Make a schedule that works for you. But as long as week number six and everything before week number six is done by the 22nd at midnight, that's cool. But by that point, then I can start getting you graded and everything for the last week and a half, which is going to be week seven and eight, right? Right on. So we're on to it. Well done, everybody. Hope that helps you. Hope that sets you up for what you need. Now look at the schedule. Look what you need to make this happen. Accelerated college level history course. 
It's the same course that every student who takes a world history class in across the United States at every university is looking at. And you're doing it in half the time. So well done to you. I know it's not easy, but you're doing it. Use time to use this as a lesson and a tool to learn how to navigate your schedule with your busy time in the summertime, that's the hardest school to, uh, tool maybe to learn, and how to not be overwhelmed by all the reading by skimming it and using these tools I'm giving you of how to get through massive amounts of reading in a, in a very uh, bite-sized pieces and manageable way. Learn that and you're gonna rock this class and you'll rock university. All right, thanks everybody. Have a great rest of this weekend and have a great week ahead.